everybody, it's Damon here from Fender at the mighty GAK in Brighton. Here with my friend Jimbo, who is the in-house Fender product specialist at GAK. Here today to talk about something we're really, really focusing on for 2015 with Fender, which is the absolute core of the Fender range, which is the American Standard Series. Um, so what we're going to do is myself and Jimbo, are gonna, we're going to talk to you about the guitars, talk about uh, where they're made, how they're made, basically what you're getting for your money. Um, Jim has got a three single coil Strat. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. And I have uh, its bigger, meaner, meatier brother, which is the twin humbucking version. And we'll do a little bit of playing so you can hear these guitars in action as well. Now, I guess the thing that uh, we're really keen to talk about and to get over to you guys is the fact that the American standards are absolutely at the center of the range. This is kind of what everybody aspires to. You know, we've been making these guitars now for, for 60 years. 60 years. 60 years. So if you think about it, you know, this is the kind of the culmination of 60 years practice uh, of building Stratocasters and Telecasters. OK, so everything that everyone's always said to us, can you do this, can you do that? All of that knowledge, all that research and development comes out in the 2015 standards. So I guess the question that we get asked the most, and you probably do, Jim, as well, in store especially, is, you know, why? What, what do you get with an American standard? So, yeah, yep, that's what people always want to know, isn't yep, it? So absolutely. we'll go through that. So the thing to remember, OK, is that if you look at Whoever you love, whether it be David Gilmore, whether it be Hank Marvin, it yep. could be, it could be Hank Marvin, it could be Buddy Holly, it could be Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, it could be Gary Moore, it could be Mark Knopfler. All of those guitars that those guys played, they were the standards of the day. Yeah. Because in 1963, there wasn't a, a vintage style guitar, there wasn't a deluxe, there wasn't a standard. That was it. So this, these guitars represent that, but for today's player. Okay, so obviously the first thing that we're going to tell you is that they are handmade in Corona in California. You know, this is the thing, and people you are always going to want to kind of buy into that American-made thing. You know, yep. it's an iconic thing. It's a classic design. It doesn't really get any more iconic than that. Or that. Or that. Um, so, built in Corona, every one of these guitars has, you know, you might think uh, a lot of guitars these days, a big percentage of them are made by machines. These have over a hundred hand done processes on them. So the finishing of the fretboards, the frets, the putting the pickups in, everything like that is a hundred different uh, hand done processes. So thing to remember as well is the quality of the woods. Yeah. Yeah, because this, yeah, turn it over. Let's have a look at the back. Look at that. that. shows. It's just two bits of wood bolted together. This is, people who know me will know I've been saying this for years. So. The quality of the woods is absolutely paramount. So when you buy an American standard, you're paying for the quality of the woods. It's a much higher grade wood than you'll get on guitars from elsewhere. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, secondly, the thing to remember is the fretboards. We've got an extra fret. So if you need to whittle at the top end. Yeah. Exactly. We've got an extra fret so we can get right up there. All American guitars and basses have hand-rolled edges of the fretboard. So you pick that up and you go, Nice right. and comfortable. That feels comfortable, really isn't comfortable. it? It feels like I've been playing it for years and years and years. Okay, that's because someone again by hand, the hand process, rolls the edges of the fretboard. The end of the fret's done by hand. The nut detailing and the edge. So you pick it up and straight away, it feels really, really comfortable. Just a few little things, you know, that make a real difference. Um, two point trims. Yeah. As I'm sure you can see there, it's like on a knife edge there, rather than six screws holding it in. You've got two, and you've also got. I'm going to look down it in a rock and roll fashion. Staggered machine heads as well. So these are lower than the bottom A and the bottom E, creates a better break angle over the nut, better sustain, better tuning stability. Okay, so if you want to. It's going to stay in tune better. Let's face it, we all want a guitar that stays in tune better, don't we? Yes, um, we do. What we also did was because, as I say, this is the culmination of all our experience of, of 60 years of building these guitars for, for players. Um, so with the two-point bridge, you'll notice we have got vintage bridge saddles, mm. okay? And in the back, you've got a full-size, full-density vintage trem block, Yeah. okay? And these guitars have also got super thin undercoats, okay? So when you're paying for premium for the wood, like you are on these guitars, um, it kind of, it's not nitrocellulose, but it's very, very thin. All the sealers yeah. and the undercoats are very, very thin. So with the vintage bridge saddles, the trem block and that, it makes the guitar kind of sound yeah. more vintagey. Okay, so this is what we're trying to get. It's that, that amalgam 
a good word. It's a good it's word using context. It's, it's a good. <laughs> it's a mixture of vintage and modern. So they sound like a great vintage style Strat or Tele, um, but they stay in tune and they play like a modern guitar. Yeah, because with that thin skin, that's just going to let the wood resonate. Absolutely. Such a way, isn't it? Like As I say, and you're paying, a, you know, you're paying a premium for the quality of the woods. So that's super mm. important. Now. Just very quickly, I guess, before we move on. Oh, you get a lovely case with it. Oh, yes. As I'm sure, when you come in to GAK uh, and you purchase your Strat off Jim here, he will put it in the case and you'll look at it. And it's a thing of beauty, my friend. It is. OK, so pickup wise, um, a couple of years ago, what we did was to add yet more value to the American Standard Series, we started putting Fender Custom Shop pickups on the uh, single coil Strats and Tellys. We'll look at the tellies in a little bit, but on the Strat, these are testing time. Custom shop, fat 50s. They are, fat 50s. So, you know, if you want to go out before, if you wanted to put these as after sales pickups, they're quite expensive, made in the Fender custom shop, which is where all the great um, kind of handmade stuff, the stuff that's made for the stars and that is, is created. Um, so you take a classic 50 style pickup, which is very bright, yep. very low output, very little, not a lot of mid, not a lot of bass, which to some people, especially for higher gain applications, should you like to rock metal gent, I've heard of, punk, yep. anything like that, <laughs> thrash, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, they can be, especially through an overdriven amp, uh, kind of too bright. So what we did, we take the classic 50, so you still get all that sparkle, clarity and definition at the top end, but with more mid range, more bass, yeah, um, exactly more, more punch. Yeah. So if you like this, you need a bit more of this, it's perfect for that. Exactly right, okay. yeah. Um, you know, that's it, you've got parchment parts, we've got the gloss finish on the front of the fretboard. So the American standard really is absolutely, it's that iconic, I want it kind of aspirational guitar. Um, yeah. Certainly when I was growing up, you know, I looked at Richie Blackmore playing with Deep Purple, and I looked at Hendrix, and I looked at. SRV. I was the same, yeah, absolutely. And that was it. You know, that's what <laughs> I, that really is what I wanted. So you are, you're getting a guitar built in the sunshine of Corona, you know, absolutely. in California, um, with all that history as well. You know, that's what we're very, very proud of the fact that, you know, this guitar has been used on so many iconic recordings in the last sixty years. Absolutely. You could almost say it's shaped the musical landscape of the last sixty years. I would totally agree with yeah. that. So, still is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay, so that gives you an idea of the quality of the woods, where it's made, the pickups. Uh, we've got a 9.5 radius fretboard with medium jumbo frets, which might sound like a, huh? What's that kind of moment? But should you require to do, do that shreddy thing you did just now? Can you if do that? You wanted to do something like this, and then this. That's it. Or even. Or even With this. Great ease. Okay, so right up the top of the fretboard, right up at the dusty end, flatter fretboard, big frets just means it's easier to play. You can play faster, yeah, um, and you can bend freely on a vintage guitar with a with a curved fretboard. It's not quite so easy to do. So there we go. So that's a, an overview of uh, the 2015 standard Strats. Uh, this guitar, obviously, we said it's got fat 50s. This has uh, the kind of the twin head humbuckers, which uh, I would say is like a classic vintage humbucking pickup with just a little bit more output. So you still retain the kind of the twang and the bite and the clarity that you want from a from a Fender guitar, but with just a little bit more bite and a little bit more power. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, a we'll have a little play. Uh, and we're going to go through the different pickups and you can hear them clean and you can hear them dirty. Then we'll do a little bit of playing probably together. Yep. If it works. Sounds good. Um, and you can have a listen to them as well. Okay, so what we thought might be fun um, would be to run through the pickups uh, on Jim's guitar here, which we said before, our, our Fat 50s custom shops. Yep. I've got my twin head humbuckers here. So um, obviously I mean, I've got a three way on here, uh, two volumes and a tone, whereas uh, Jim's got the traditional set up here but it is worth pointing out on the uh, American standards that the tone control is wired to the bridge as well so if you want to get your fuzz on that is um, handy it is very handy because I some of my favorite sounds playing a Strat you know which I do a lot um, is on the bridge pickup with some overdrive and the tone rolled off yeah also with a telly as well that's a sound yeah. that I absolutely that's a great love. sound so Jim let's have a little listen first of all just okay. pure unfettered in the bridge okay he's gonna play something and I'll play something not the same because my ears aren't that good uh, but in a, maybe a similar kind of generic style. Cool. Um, so let's have a listen to the, the Fat 50s bridge. And let's okay, see how, so how this that... is bridge pickup wide open. Mm. 
So on mine, bridge pickup clean. <laughs> Yep, so bigger, fatter. Yeah, definitely. Lovely. So you've got all the twang, all the bite. Now, I can't do the next one. So what we want is one and two from you. Okay, so we'll do that. It's the classic, not out of phase. This is actually two single coils in parallel. Parallel. Which is something that uh, which is, people get mixed up with. As a massive it's, Albert Lee fan, is my favourite sound on a strap. There we go. So I do So let's give that. it some of that. Wicked. Some Albert Lee E type stuff. Lovely, but great you get stuff. The idea. And that's that classic. Also, great for um, here. Look, we're gonna we're gonna improvise here. Pass me that a sec. Yeah. I just have to do this. Great for the funk. Walk a chicken. And we love the funk. That's wicked. Absolutely. Changing guitars, there we go. Okay, so let's hear your middle pick up there, the fat 50s in the middle. Okay, so. And I think that's uh, the middle pick up, definitely used a lot by people like Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan, those kind of guys. You know, we use the bridge, we use the neck a lot, but the middle, especially with a bit of gain, you get yep. the best of both worlds, the bite of the bridge and the plummy goodness of the neck too. Plummy goodness. And so let's go on to your neck then. Okay. And let's have a little, let's, let's do this. This is my favorite sound, being a huge kind of Gilmore fan and all that. So on the American standard, you know, on these American hand-built guitars, you're gonna get really close to those real iconic Strat sounds that we all carry around mm. in our brains, whether it be Band of Gypsies or, or like I say, Mr. Gilmore, whoever it is, so. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely. I mean, on the neck pickup, you can get sort of a nice. It's, it's almost jazz, jazz blues isn't it? sound. Yeah. Great stuff. And then up the top. Great lead pickup yeah. as well. As Awesome, so great for those Steve Ray Vaughan kind of sounds as well. Okay, so, you know, I'll just very quickly show you the middle pick up these two twin heads together. That's the note. What um, I love about those is like, you can tell it's instantly fatter, but it's still retain. You can still yeah, tell it's a Fender. Exactly. You know, it's got you know I think that's the, the these pickups. The hotter your pickup is, the less you're going to hear the guitar and the woods. You know, like we said, when you've got a guitar that's uh, like this, when you've got great tone woods and, and kind of hand built, um, you don't want to destroy it by putting pickups on it that are too loud. Yeah. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the differences tonally between the single coil and the humbucker. Uh, we're gonna have a little jam together now. I've got um, I've got my big fat humbuckers, but I've also got. Like... I've got a fuzz face, and I've got a bit of a little bit of a uh, kind of tube screamer as well. So yeah. we're gonna have another little play, and you can have a listen again. Mm -hmm. 